Welcome to the Lowe's House Pod- Podcast. <laughs> that was awful. I'm Joseph, and that is Elise. Hi. Elise. She's no longer going under Torchy. She's just going under Elise. That's uh, because everyone, every conversation I have over this Lowe's House thing, happens to call me Elise in conversation. It's because you're Elise. It's hard to be a non on the internet. Torchy. I think I remember when you came up with Torchy. That was a long time ago. Hi, this is the first episode of our podcast on the 1st of October 2013. Um, and we try to keep it about gaming, but I think it will deviate. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this cat really... This cat is for serious. All right, so... So we've got a special guest on today's podcast, and that's Frank's cat. Yeah. What you don't hear in Law's house that I cut out a lot is the fact that I have a cat, and she's the most annoying roommate in the world. Well, cats are like humans' weird reclusive roommate that poops in boxes and climbs over your stuff and sleeps on your keyboard. If by poop in box you mean the outside world, the large, beautiful outside world... Most cats poop in boxes. Sandbox. Whoa. Speaking and now, of boxes. Yeah. Oh. Um. Steam box. Speaking of boxes, Valve's released plans to produce essentially what I would call the Linux of consoles, the Steam box. But see, the great thing about this is it has the potential to be, hopefully, coming out the gates, a... um a major system. The problem with um, Linux at the moment is it's not a major system except for on phones. Because Android's amazing. See, yeah, because the deal with Linux is what it seems to need is a corporation to back it to become popular. You know, Google backed Linux in the form of Android and it became boom! It it's became the second boom. most popular operating system of mobile devices. It's the most popular but Apple. Yeah, no. <laughs> Only in America do they have a stronghold. Every other country, no. <laughs> you just... At least it's just the antithesis. The thing, the thing is with, with, with Android, though, is there are actually so many different versions because Samsung doesn't use Android Android. It uses it its own version of Android. No, no, no. It uses Android with its own things tacked on. Yeah. So Which is kind of like how, how Steambox is going to work because it's you're able to customize your own individual console and customize the OS and use your own controllers. So it's essentially you get to use your own customized version of everything Valve in order to play all your games. You mean it's an actual operating system, you know, that actually gives you freedom? You know? Like Linux! Yeah, because it is. Woo! Good! Good on you! Okay, so Valve are here. And they're not quite queer, but they are here, and they are coming out with an amazing console idea. You can build your own Steam box. It runs Steam OS, which is a modified version of, I think it's Ubuntu at this point, but it might be some other Linux distro in the future. But it's streamlined for playing games. NVIDIA and ACI are coming out and backing it with better graphic support, better driver support. Um, Left 4 Dead 2 already gets 25% better performance on Linux than it does on Windows, apparently. Um, Not that your gaming experience at the moment is anything to go by that. <laughs> um, Left 4 Dead 2. Um, ooh, my laptop does not like Left 4 Dead 2 on any operating system. Um, which is why we haven't continued our Left 4 Dead 2 episode series, I guess. It's a, it's a bit hard to have a lol's house when Funky is not in the building. Oh, thank you. But I, th- I think the most exciting thing about the Steam Box is that it's taken away probably the one main advantage for PC, the PC gaming master race. And that is, as a PC, avid PC gamer, I customise my own machine. And it means that I'm essentially running the top end system at all times, which means all the new games come out, keep getting better and better, but my computer can keep on matching them. Yep. And that's an advantage over current consoles because with your current console, when you buy it, 
that's what you're stuck with until we get the next generation. But with yeah. the Steam Box, you're essentially being able to take all the advantages of being able to customize your own PC and keep it up to date with the top end hardware alongside all of the advantages of having a console. Things like you get to use your massive television and sit on your sofa instead of sitting at your computer desk. That, that is a big advantage, I find. Um, also, the ability to um, upgrade your hard drive in any way you want. So you have unlimited storage, it seems. That seems amazing. Um, I, 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 I do really, really like it in that way. I like the controller idea, too, because it seems to um, solve a lot of problems that um, PC gamers have when they go to... Um, Control, there's, there's a lot more accuracy due to them being really high precision trackpads. I'm actually kind of excited about the the um the controllers because as someone who grew up with no consoles in the house at all, so I've never really used an Xbox controller yeah. or a PlayStation controller, and the Wiimote just gives me arthritis. The, the 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 trackpads have a bit of potential, I think, for me because I've never been able to use my thumbs properly to use the joysticks. They've always confused me a little bit. But these trackpads might actually give me the opportunity to really attempt console-based gaming, which is good. But the other thing the Steam Box does is that you can use your own controllers anyway. Yeah. So if you're not a fan of the Steam controller, you can plug in your Xbox controller and Steam won't get mad at you. I'm going to find a really, really clever way to use my Wii U controller with the Steam Box because that is my favorite type of controller. When it comes to controllers, my favorite is the Wii U controller. Second is the PlayStation 3, and the third is the Xbox. And that's not a regular thing, I hear. I hear the Xbox is usually close to number one. My favorite controller is a mouse and a WAS and D keypad. We're not counting that. We're not doing spreadsheets, Elise. We're playing video games. <laughs> but there used to be a video game Easter egg inside Microsoft Excel. Well, yes, but, you know... It was amazing. It was like my favorite game ever. The hell are you proving? With... What are you proving? I'm proving that computers are a legitimate gaming console and should be recognized as such. You totally need to prove that, yeah. Because I totally yeah. don't believe you. Yeah, you really don't. Shut up. Okay, so have you seen... <laughs> Question though, have you seen a Wii U controller before? No. Okay, so... What's a Wii U? It's pretty much the Wii too. For the uninitiated, I have grown up entirely on computers. Yep. My understanding of consoles is that there is a PlayStation, an Xbox, and a Nintendo Wii, which has recently been upgraded to the Wii U, the X-Bone, and the PlayStation 4. I did hear there were a lot of complaints with the Wii uh, as it kind of lent more towards casual gamers. What about the, um, the controller with the three sticks, the three grippy things? You're talking about the 64 controller? Yeah, the 64 controller, the legendary controller. It's one of the, the other controller I'm vaguely familiar with. Because it looks about as easy to use as using a goldfish to control your character in Counter-Strike. The thing about it is you have the D-pad on the left side of the controller for the three, for the 64. You have the buttons on like the right side. And you had an analog stick in the middle part. And what you used to do is, because there was a button on the back of the middle part called the Z button, you used to just hold that middle part and the right side and just forget the left side of the controller ever existed. Best design ever. It was so much fun, though. It was a good controller. Minecraft. So, this article. The basic article is, in Florida, a nine-year-old boy has been sentenced to home confinement after being caught with a handgun, a magazine with six rounds, a steak knife, and a small sledgehammer. The boy's father blamed the, blamed the incident upon Minecraft, which the son played every day for about an hour. Oh, God, what? Firstly, are there even guns in Minecraft? I haven't played it in a long time. There are no guns in Minecraft. Um, no, no, this doesn't make sense. The kid had an unloaded handgun. The kid can't craft an unloaded handgun in Minecraft or the real world. He would have had to have got that from his dad. Yes. So but you can he... see there's some bad parenting there already if the kid has access to a gun. It's America. I don't care. 
in America, there are still locks. You can still lock, you know, a box. If you're going to have a gun, put a lock on a box. I think the thing that, that's, that's really evident here is, again, people that don't understand games yeah. are blaming incidences upon games. Um, it's, 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 like, it's like Luddites all over again, you know, smashing up the, the printing press because they're afraid of things. Yeah, I think the thing that we have to realize is um, people's people can okay okay. This is going to sound controversial till I finish it. This is going to sound controversial till I finish what I'm saying. Um, people can imitate video games, but it's they have a moral compass still. You know that's why cosplay happens. People imitate the video games. They want to pretend to be the people in the video games but they aren't trying to kill people like people in the video games. You know, people's moral compasses still work in the event of video games. I mean, I, the, the argument is, is related to the idea as to why there shouldn't be violence in the media because we shouldn't expose um, young people in particular that are influenced by art in any way, shape and form to those sorts of things. But... At the same time, given that the va- the large demographic of older gamers and that the average age of gamers is 35, I think we need to move on from the notion that video games are inherently evil and that we should be appreciating them in the same way that we appreciate movies. Like, there can be lots of violence in movies and we don't really have that much of an issue with it. But the moment we start punching trees down with our fists, we start blaming the games for the actions of other people. Apart from a bit of creative license, um, Minecraft seems to emulate in an interesting way the um, the way that humans have developed, if you think about it. What did we do? We started to... We, we domesticated animals. We, we kill animals for food. It's what happens. We, you know build things, eventually crafted things. We didn't go and kill Ender Dragons. That hasn't happened yet. We're working on that. We haven't found the portal yet. No, but we do a lot of things that happen in Minecraft. You know, it's like the things that happen in video games are a reflection on real life most of the time. Like... Blame Call of Duty for, you know, people shooting up other people, and then just look at war. Call of Duty is war. It's a glorified version of war, it seems. And who glorifies war better than anyone else? The media. Woo, the media. Woo, the media. I think, I, I think you're more likely to find um, instances where people have been influenced by the notion of becoming famous or getting attention through the media or being influenced by other forms of entertainment than actually video games. Really. Censorship. The real problem here is censorship because... Oh, um, don't get me started. <laughs> because basically if people are limited in how they can express themselves, they're going to bubble up how they express themselves and they're going to eventually pop. You know, if people were more open about, you know, if there wasn't this, like, macho bullshit idea. And I'm not talking about the nine-year-old. The nine-year-old probably just did a show-and-tell thing. You know? Yeah, he brought, he brought the weapons to school and then showed his friends. He was obviously just trying to fit in, yeah, trying was... to be seen as cool. And obviously cool is still associated with owning weapons, which is probably a reflection on societal expectations of machoism, where we still consider violence an important part of being a man. He wasn't trying to hurt anybody with what he took to school anyway. He was just trying to be Steve, it seems, if I'm reading this article right. You know, the violence isn't actually going to happen in real life. Well, there's no zombies to start with, no skeletons, and definitely no creepers. I am so glad there are no creepers in real life. I'll get back to censorship in a second, but I read this article, and it says that Minecraft is rated E10 plus by the ESRB, which means that it's for 10-year-olds and up, and this kid is 9 years old. 
some it, failure of parenting some there. Some failure of parenting right there. But I, I mean, that's that is the same logic that um, they used for so many years to keep R eighteen plus movie uh, movies, R eighteen plus games out of our country. It do, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You know, even the current R eighteen plus rating in Australia doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. When it comes to video games, they just moved MA fifteen plus up a little bit and allowed a little bit extra. They still disallow games due to which, R18. Which makes no sense to me at all. It doesn't make any sense to anyone. The same things can be depicted in movies, and that's fine. We can have the highest selling book in the world, other than the Bible, is just a big pile of pornography, and that's fine. But the moment you try to <sighs> stick e- anything like that into a video game, it gets banned in Australia. Yeah, it's. Is it, uh, I think we'd learn a lot more and we'd be, we would just exist better if censorship were lowered. I mean, there's no point to censorship. You can bleep out the word fuck, but the word fuck is still going to be in, be in people's minds. You know, it's still going to be there. Well, the, the fact is we've now come to associate that sort of language with censorship. I don't know if you've, you've ever gone online and watched that on YouTube they do unnecessary censorship, okay. and they've done things like Sesame Street. It's just hilarious yeah. because your brain automatically <clears throat> fills inappropriate words, yeah. no matter the context. There's no point to it. There is none. And it's not like people don't hear, hear these words all the time. Vibrators. It's a bit like um, they were they were Woolworths, one of our local supermarkets was selling vibrators for two weeks and then they canned them. But they were selling them in the same aisle as the condoms and lubricant. They were only small button ones. But there was this huge outroar being made about the idea that going down that aisle, because it also happens to sell toothpaste, um, you would have to explain to your child what a vibrator was and just had discuss with them sex and masturbation and all those sorts of issues. And it was really weird because you're in the same aisle as the condoms and the lubricant and the vibrator is just a step too far. It wasn't as if it was, you know, colourfully packaged with flashy lights saying, hello, children, I am a sex toy. You know you want me. They sell them at Walmart. That's that's an interesting one, selling that sort of stuff at, at Woolworths or Walmart. Um <laughs> Ooh. I mean, it's a tough call to make. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, we we should necessarily stock up our supermarkets with sex toys. I think that yeah. there, there's a definite market there for adult shops. But in terms of the notion that the boycott was based on the grounds of how am I going to explain this to my children yeah. if they ask? was a bit bizarre. That's a bit weird, I think, yeah. Particularly, because um, where they were positioned in the store was with all the other sex-based items, so it wasn't as if it was miscategorized in a different location. No. And they weren't selling anything that was overtly sexual. It was merely the, the small-sized vibrators that they would use. Yeah. Clitoral stimulation ones, I believe, was the classification of them. Oh, it was vibrating bullet, so... Yeah, the, vib- the vibrating bullet, which was subtly packaged, and I don't have an inherent issue with it. Um, I'm kind of neutral on the whole thing, really. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't have a thought on it. You don't know where to stand. I don't, I don't know where to stand, but <clears throat> I don't feel like it's wrong. But I don't feel that it's right. I feel like it's more right than wrong. I feel like it's more... That's not something for me to choose. They can sell whatever the hell they want. To me, I can I, I can understand if it was overtly packaged and perhaps its positioning on the shelf. I think they had it at a fairly low shelf level. Mm. Um, may have been a poor choice on the supermarket part. Yeah. But... 
I don't think that the concept of having that sort of product in our supermarket should really be an issue as long as it's put in the sex department. Yeah. I mean, don't sell it in confectionery. Because... <laughs> candy, candy vibrator. Candy, candy, candy. I don't know. Coated in caramel. It's a complicated issue. It really is. And it, it, it leads to the question, at what point do we draw the line? A basic thought would be, you know, having zero censorship. Okay. So what have we covered? We have covered the Steam box. We've gone on a weird tangent. Weird tangent. We've done the weird tangent. You probably will cut out most of that. Captain America the Winter Soldier in cinemas April 3, 2014. I'm so excited. I haven't watched a superhero movie in a very long time. Why not? I don't like superhero movies. Get out of my life. I am part of your life. I'm a big part of your life. That means I'm not inviting you to come see Thor The Dark World. I am into superhero movies. I think they're the greatest thing ever. Yeah, you can come to see Thor The Dark World. Thank you for listening. Um, We'll have another podcast out soon. Yeah, soon. Oh, my God, we'll do them while I'm at work in Perth when I'm working. We will. Weekend podcasts. Alrighty. Bye-bye.